Well, it's good to be here again. Good to have you. We have been on assignment. Yes. God's been at work. Amen. Amen. We've been learning how to pray for our children. But specifically today, I'm going to go ahead and open up with our text. It's Psalms 127, verse 3 and 4. It says, Behold, children are a heritage from the Lord. The fruit of the womb is a reward. Like arrows in the hand of a warrior, so are the children of one's youth. Yeah. And we're going to talk today about what a praying parent can do. So we're just going to go ahead and jump right in. So how do we pray for our children? In other words, where do we begin? First of all, we must know his general will. Yes. <laughs> right? We must know his general will. Hosea 4, 6 says, my people are destroyed because of a lack of knowledge. And I think that's why many families are destroyed. Many things are happening because we don't have knowledge of how to pray for our children. Right. But what I love about what we're doing here is that Romans 10, 17 says that faith comes by hearing right. and hearing by the word of God. Yeah. And as far as I know, we're going to get into a little bit of faith today. Okay. So where does, where do we begin? We must know his general will. Number one, um, uh, 1 Timothy 2, 4 says, I would that all men be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. Right. It's God's will that all of your children are taught by him and that their peace and their 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 uh their peace is undisturbed. It's his will Amen. that they be saved. Acts 16 31 says, Believe in the Lord, and you will be saved and your household. Amen. So you can stand on this promise. This is the promise of God. And all the promises of God are yes and amen. That's right. And you can stand on this word and say, no, devil, no. Right. All of my children will be saved, and great will be the peace and undisturbed composure of my children. Amen. You know, the scripture says he sent his word, and he healed them and delivered them from the destruction of the enemy. Yeah, so right. we thank God for the word of God, that his word doesn't return void, yeah. that it will produce and accomplish what it's been sent forth to do. Amen. Okay? So believe in the <laughs> Lord and you will be saved and your household. <coughs> Romans 1.16 says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel, because it is the power of God that brings salvation... To everyone who believes, first the Jew, then to the Gentile. So the gospel is the power of God unto salvation. Mm -hmm. That word salvation is soteria. And it means healing, deliverance, yes. safety, and soundness. That's right. So if you have any questions about any of these things in regard to the rising generations that are in the earth, this is God's will. Yeah. It's his will that they be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. It's his will that they be healed in their body. Yeah. It's their, his will that they be delivered from the evil one. Right. It's his will that they be safe when they go to school. <clears throat> it's his will that they have a sound and well-balanced mind. Right. So, so there's, just, there's just everything is right here to know his general will. And we know that 1 John 2 says... Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health just as your soul prospers. So God's will is that they prosper and that they're in health even as their soul prospers. That's right. So we've got all the bases covered here. Yeah. Amen. <coughs> Here's some more promises to encourage. You know, I said in my book, Contend, Stirring the Hearts and Destinies of Our Children in Prayer, we have... Uh, I think it's like 65 promises in the very back of the book. So there's a promise that meets the need for your children. As a matter of fact, we're going to get into it. So it's coming up in my spirit now. When you pray for your children, find a scripture that meets their need. Yeah. Right. And agree with the word of God. And that's what you prevent, present before the throne room of grace. Right. Don't pray the problem over and over right. and over right. again. Right. Intercession. Oh, it's repetition praying. Oh, importunity, praying with importunity. 
Pray the promises of God That's that right. are yes and amen. Yeah. Pray the word of God. Don't <laughs> pray the problem over and over and over again. Yeah. That's just digging yourself into unbelief. It's just, it's really, let not that man think he'll receive anything from the Lord. Right. Pray the answer. The answer is the word of God. Now, it's okay to acknowledge the problem because we all know as prophetically praying parents or grandparents, you know, we think, a lot of us think a lot. And we're going to talk about this as time goes on. But, you know, you you know, as you watch over your family in the spirit, you know, sometimes you pick up on things or you just know things in your head. And so it's hard sometimes as parents not to be concerned or worried. But we don't want to pray worried prayers. Right. This is not in my notes right now. We don't want to pray worried prayers. Yeah, right. We want to pray the word of God right. mixed with faith. Yes. And that's what produces results on the behalf of your children. Right. Don't pray worried prayers. We can acknowledge the problem. We can say, all right, Lord, you know what's going on, da 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 da, da whatever. But pray the answer. Okay? So here's some more scriptures. Proverbs 22, 6 says, Train up a child in the way that he should go. And when he's old, he will not depart from it. So some of you who have kids, young people, however old they are, we're talking about the babies that are born now, all the way up to the millennials. You raised them in church. <coughs> they were raised in church. They sat through worship services, and they go off to college. And all of a sudden, they're out partying and hanging out with their friends and doing things that you didn't teach them to do. Right? Okay? But here's the deal. The deal is this. When you train up a child in the ways that they should go, right. when you put the word of God in their hearts, the, the word of God and all the things that they've received throughout all their forming years <laughs> is going to come up and it's going to invade their mind yeah. and their soul and they will not be able to depart from what they've been taught. Yeah. I am so excited this morning. <laughs> okay? Isaiah 54, 13. Here's another a promise. I'm only going to give you a couple. I'm not going to give you all 65. <laughs> all of your children shall be taught by the Lord. We already said it, but here's the reference. And great shall be the peace of your children. All of your children. Not the, the two children. Every single one of your children will be taught by the Lord. And great will be the peace and the undisturbed composure of your children. Amen. And let me just say this. That one child that some of you have that gives you the most trouble? Mm. Hello? Mm. <laughs> She's an angel. She's, right there, right there. <laughs> She's a true angel. <laughs> She's an angel. She's even got a halo on her head. But that one, let me tell you, that one, I would have to say, is probably marked by God and set apart by God for the work of the ministry. And has some kind of gifting that the enemy is afraid of them developing in their life. That's right. <laughs> Are you listening? Yeah. Just remember, we said it before, we'll say it again. We're sin abounds, grace does so much Amen. more about. That, per, that yes. child needs more and more That's and more right. grace. Yes. But as parents, sometimes I think we need to say, give me grace, Lord, raise the child. Give me grace to raise the child. Yes. Amen? Amen. Well, yes. he said, I, you know what I just heard in my spirit? My grace is sufficient for you. That's right. Thank you. Yeah, right? Yes. So we've got the oh, grace yeah. that we need. And here's another thing. We've got the wisdom that we need mm -hmm. to raise these children. Yeah. And if we lack wisdom or we don't know what to do or how to answer their question or how, mm -hmm. what exactly they need, we can pray and ask God for wisdom and he'll give it to us abundantly. Or we can read a book about raising kids. <coughs> yeah. I actually recommend several books in my in my book, Contend, because I feel like, I don't feel, I know, I feel like it's not just all prayer. Oh, sure. you got to raise your kids right. you got to understand their love language. Yeah. you got to understand, um, you know, the things, what kind of personality that they have, because it really helps to, ha to develop a well-rounded child. You have to understand that, you know, we can't be always preoccupied and our kids don't have eye contact with us and our intention. Right. Otherwise, that kid is going to think they're not loved. Right. You're so, not it's, it, yes, I believe in the power of prayer. I believe in prayer. But I think we also need to be a little more practical at times. Yes. Amen? Yeah. Amen. Okay, Philippians 1.6 says, Being confident of this, 
that he who has begun a good work, let's say in the rising generations, will carry it on to completion until the day of Jesus Christ. Now, lastly, Isaiah 49, 25. Aren't you glad that I gave a lot of scripture? Yes. Because this is what builds your faith. Absolutely. My son said to me one time, he said, Mommy, you know, you know I love that kids still call me Mommy. You know, that's a New Jersey thing. Yeah. Did you guys know that? Yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm not from here originally. It's a New Jersey. Mommy is a New Jersey thing. Yeah. Okay. It's, it's cute. I like it. But I don't know why I said that. Oh, my son said, <laughs> Mommy, he said, you know what I like about your ministry? I go, what? He goes, you give a lot of scripture. Yeah. And I said, you know, sometimes I think that's what we need. Yeah. You know, I think storytelling is good. I think it's their windows to our messages. Sure. But giving scripture really lays that foundation. Amen? Yeah. Right. Isaiah 49, 25 <clears throat> says, I will contend with those who contend with you and your children I will save. Amen. That's Hallelujah. That's, I love this one. Yeah. Your children I will save. Okay? Now, knowing his will builds confidence in prayer. Yeah. Everyone say that. Knowing his will builds confidence in prayer. First John 5, 14 and 15 says, This is the confidence that we have in approaching God if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. Yeah. And if we know he hears us, whatever we ask, we know we have what we have asked of him. Amen. So when you pray the will of God and the word of God, it will build your confidence in prayer. Mm -hmm. I've asked according to the will of God. And number two, when you know he hears you, you know you have the petitions you desire of him. Mm -hmm. Some people think, well, I don't think God hears me because... When I pray, you know, it just feels like my words are going out and hitting the back wall and coming back and hitting. It doesn't, you can't be moved by what right. you feel. Right. God said in his word, my eyes will be open mm -hmm. and my ears attentive unto the prayers that are made in this place. So when you pray for the rising generations, know that he hears you. Yes. And know that when you pray the word of God, that, that you will have the petitions you desire of him. I hesitated because he's talking to me and I'm trying to finish my sentence. It's very interesting how that works. Yes. Listen, let me just explain something to you. Sometimes when you pray for your children, things get worse before things get better. Right. Yeah. yeah. The word's always tested. <laughs> so right. why does it get worse at times before it gets better? Right. Well, two things. Or it could be one or another, or both. Number one, <laughs> you begin to pray for your children, then the Holy Spirit, his ministry is to convict and convince them of their need for Jesus. I think that's John 16 or John 14, right? He's convicting them, you're praying, so you're releasing the ministry of the Holy Spirit, so he starts to hover around them, and they're doing whatever they're doing, and they're convicted, and they're convinced of their need for Jesus, they sense a pull. I remember when I was in the process of getting saved, because it took about a year, I could literally feel a pull. I was always really sensitive to the things of the Spirit. <clears throat> some of you, and some of you that are listening, as a child, you understand what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. So I can remember the pull of something dark pulling me and then something this way pulling me. There was actually, I can actually remember being in my car and having a, this sense of there's some kind of war going on over my life. And it was either yield to this side or yield to that side. Well, you can't serve both. You right. have to give Jesus Christ absolute lordship. But a lot of times they get worse because they're convicted. And when you get convicted, you're not happy drinking and hanging out at the bars anymore and hanging out with your friends or doing whatever they're doing. Because the Holy Spirit's beginning to shine the light on their hearts by revelation that Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life, and that no man goes to the Father except through him. And Jesus is shining the light saying, this is not going to satisfy you. You need me. I'm the author and the finisher of your faith. You need me to be happy. Okay? So their souls are troubled and their souls are being convicted. Or, number two, um, the devil. It's just the devil. The devil doesn't want to give up his stronghold. Yeah. So he's fighting. 
He's, he, yes, yeah. We don't rest. There's always such a spirit of revelation in this church. We don't wrestle against flesh and blood. We're wrestling against principalities, powers, rulers of the That's darkness right. of this world. Yeah. So the enemy, if he's got his hand on their life, he doesn't want to give up. Yeah. And he's not going to give up easily or quickly. That's why you've got to keep on praying this art of intercession Keep praying, keep bringing them before the throne of God, one hand on them, one hand on God, and keep praying for them. We're going to talk about this next week. I'm going to talk a lot about praying in the Holy Ghost yes. and the power it produces. Mm -hmm. So the devil just doesn't want to give up his stronghold over their life. So what happens? Well, how many of you remember the story of the little boy that had the demon and Jesus came and cast the devil out of the little boy. And, you know, he commanded the evil spirit to leave. He had to leave. There was just no, no, you know, the devil had to leave. That's it. You got to go. You got to go. This is my child. You got to go. You can't have my child. You got to go. No weapon formed against my child will prosper. You got to go. So the enemy starts to get like, like, what? 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 Does that praying parent really mean what she says? Or he says, what, what? And so finally, when you're just, you're steadfast, yes. immovable, right. always abounding in the work of prayer and intercession on yes. the behalf of your kids, eventually the devil's got to go. Right. Yeah. Resist. Are you listening? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's like when Jesus cast the devil out of that little boy, the Bible says he knew he had to go, but the Bible says he tore him yeah. and then he left. Right. So he put up a stink, put up a fight. See, parents... Caregivers, <coughs> the devil wants you to quit praying. He wants you to throw up your hands and go, I heard all kinds of teaching. I'm praying for the rising generations or praying for my kids and my grandkids. And it's just not working. But let me just let me just say this. Prayer opens up the door for God to work. That's right. We have not because we ask not. But when you ask and you pray and you stand and you watch, mm -hmm. God will work and the devil has to flee. Yeah. There's no question about it. Right. That's why I read you that example of the John Ramirez <sighs> testimony. I mean, he said there were the places that he went where there was praying parents or people, he, there was, quote, no accomplishment. He couldn't do what he desired to do in the witchcraft realm and in the word curses. Mm -hmm. So don't underestimate the power of your prayers. That's right. Don't think, well, you know, maybe you're a new Christian and you, you're just getting a hold of this. Don't underestimate. You have scripture. I have scriptures in my book. You have everything you need to have a successful prayer life. And here's another thing. Don't think it's too late for your child. Yes. And you should have started when they were babies. Right. It's never right. too late. Right. Right. Amen. It's Amen. never too late. Amen. You can start right, right where you are right now. It is never too late. Are you with me? Yes. Amen. Okay. So knowing his will will increase your faith. What is faith? Hebrews 11, 1. Amplified. Now faith. You know what I like about faith? Faith is now. That's right. <laughs> right. You know, here, here's, here's, here's another thing. Faith is not only now. Faith is of the heart. Yeah. And faith is a spiritual force that goes out into the realm of the spirit and it produces results. Mm -hmm. yes. It is a spiritual force. Okay? So now faith is the assurance, the title deed, the confirmation of things hoped for, divinely, listen, guaranteed. All my children are taught of the Lord. Great will be the peace and the undisturbed composure of, of my children. Divinely guaranteed. That scripture is divinely guaranteed on the behalf of your children. <coughs> and the evidence of things not seen, the conviction of their reality, faith comprehends as fact what cannot be experienced by the physical senses. So faith is certain and isn't concerned about the circumstances, actions, right. words, right. or behavior of our children. Yeah. But instead looks at the promises of God for our children. I'm not moved by what I see. I'm not moved by what I hear. Your child may come home and curse at you and carry on and, 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 and you, know, you know, be high and all that. You just can't be moved. Yeah, yeah set boundaries, <clears throat> obviously. Right. Be a parent. 
But don't be moved by what they say. Yeah. Don't be moved by how they're acting. Don't be moved. You just be moved by what you be moved on what the word of God has to say about your children. James 1 6 says, But when you ask, you must believe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And not doubt. I have no doubt that all my children are, are taught of the Lord and great is their peace. Do they sometimes have these little hills and valleys? Yes. But I don't doubt. I'm not going to doubt. I'm going to stand. There, our children, the rising generations, are counting on us to stand in the gap for them. Amen. Because we are like the errands and the hers on their behalf. We're holding up their arms. And they need our support. I don't want to go back over that. But they need our support. Because... Because there's so much war in the earth today. Yeah. Isaiah 60, um, 1 through 5 says that there's darkness, gross darkness is covering the earth. But we know the light of God is also rising. But my friends, these, these young people, the rising generations, there's never been a, a time like this time. Yeah. Gone are the days of catching lightning bugs, putting them in a jar and shaking them and hanging out in the backyard. Oh, yeah. I know. I know the poor lightning bug. I can't believe I did that. <laughs> okay. They're, they're living in a completely different world. Right. So they're depending on us. So, But when we ask, we must believe and not doubt because the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea blown and tossed by the wind. Right. I'm gonna, I was going to get into this later, but I'll get into it now. When you pray for your child or your children or whoever... It's very important to watch what you say mm. about them. Mm -hmm. Even under your breath when you're by yourself and you're frustrated. Yeah. Right. Hello? Right. <laughs> yeah. Hello? That's the book I'm going to write right there. <laughs> okay? Because life and death right. are in the power right. of the tongue. Yeah. Notice John Ramirez said, he said... He said he would go over cities and neighborhoods and, 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 and areas. He would put what kind of curses? Word. Word curses. The power of the tongue. It is a creative force. So after you've prayed and you stood and you've interceded and done everything you know to do, watch what you say. Yeah. Watch what you tell your girlfriends when you call them, your, your, your friends over dinner as couples. Watch what you say. You know, my child is doing da 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 so it, It's okay to acknowledge things, but don't make it a practice of digging digging a hole of unbelief and nullifying your prayers. There you go. That's good. Yes. Say la. Think about it. Right. Right? So mm -hmm. think about Daniel chapter 10, right? Daniel chapter 10. It, Daniel... Set himself to seek the Lord. You're going to set yourself. I, I'm actually going to do it this week. I'm setting myself to have prayer. My prayer target's going to be praying for my kids. I'm going to put a picture, their picture. I have a picture of all five. Five of them. I have two. two I have a daughter-in-law and a son-in-law. I'm going to put them on the table, and I'm going to I'm going to make a time that I'm going to pray this week, every day, and I'm going to walk the floors. I'm going to look at that picture or hold that picture as a point of contact, and I'm going to pray for my kids. Mm. I'm going to pray things in English, and then I'm going to pray for them in the Holy Ghost. So I'm going to set myself to pray for them. Yeah. Okay? Now, Daniel set himself, himself to seek the Lord, and he prayed. And the Bible says he was in the presence of God 21 days. Okay? But... The angel and the answer, their answer wasn't dispatched right. right away. How many know the story? I'm not getting into it. Yeah. Go look it up. Yeah. Daniel chapter 10. You'll see it. It's right there. It's a principle. Right. And the angel or the, the, I think the an angel visited him and said, Daniel, oh man, greatly beloved, understand the words that I speak to you. So the answer was already on its way, right, right. but there was all this hindrance right. in the atmosphere. Right. And thank God Daniel didn't give up. That's thank great. God Daniel didn't start speaking. I guess um, God doesn't hear me. I guess, you know, my prayers aren't working. He right. didn't say that. He remained steadfast. He remained immovable. He <coughs> remained where he knew in faith. Yeah. Okay, now that's the Old Testament. How much more under the New Testament? Right. The promises of God are yes and amen. Yes. We have a better covenant based upon better promises. Right. So the angel said, 
Daniel, you're a man greatly beloved. <coughs> you know, he says, understand. Uh, he said, listen, I have come because of your words. Mm. What's the point? The point is, watch what you say and confess out of your mouth after you prayed for your kids. That's right. I've done it. We've all done it. Have we done it? Yes. yes. I don't know about you, but I talk to myself. <laughs> Do you talk to yourself? Yes. Am I the only one to talk to myself? I've got children. Son of Jesus. <laughs> you know. I talk to myself. We all do it. Right? So sometimes I'm by myself in my house, and if something's going on with my kids, I, I find myself talking to myself out loud. And then I got to watch. Because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So if we're worried or concerned about our children, if we're not careful, we'll speak things out of our mouth, even when we're by ourselves or in the car. And we'll nullify our prayers. Yeah, we know. That's good preaching. Glory be to God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. <laughs> yes, it is. Get it? Amen. <laughs> Matthew 14, 22 through 23. Peter stepped out of the boat in faith, but he began to look at the circumstances or the wind, and he got into fear. Mm -hmm. Don't get into fear. And remember this, delay is not denial. Mm. Right. Delay is not denial. God made a promise to Abraham that he would become the father of many nations. But let me tell you, this is what Abraham did. He considered not the circumstances. He considered not his body now dead, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. But right. the Bible says he was strong in faith. Yes. He didn't give up hope. He knew that faith and hope went together. It was the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. If God had promised it, he was going to perform it. He stayed in faith. Delay is not denial. And it took 25 years for that promise to be fulfilled. Right. Mm. Well done. So remember, delay is not denial. Okay? So how does a, how does a parent pray? Are you ready? That was all the intro. Okay, 1 Corinthians 14, 15. It says, I, I can quote it. It says, um, I will pray with the spirit. I will pray with the understanding also. Right, right. So in launching how to pray for our children, we pray in the spirit, which is tongues, which we'll talk about next week, which is a powerful prayer. And we also pray with our understanding. And we said it. Take your, their need to the word of God. That's what you present before the throne of God. Right. So we pray with our understanding. We agree with the word and not the problem. We find the promise that meets their need. We agree with his word and we present his word before the throne of grace. See, here's in my notes. Don't pray the problem over and over. Don't pray worry prayers. Yeah. Right? Right. Isaiah 55, 11 says that the word of God, when you pray the word of God, the word of God goes forth and it does not return void, but it prospers everywhere it sends. That's right. When you pray the scripture over your, 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 your young people, and what's actually happening is it's creating an atmosphere around them that they can't see and you can't see. Yeah. Number two, Jeremiah 1, 12. God said, you pray my word? I am ready to perform my word. Mm -hmm. Psalms 107 verse 20 says, He sent his word, and he did what? He healed them right. and delivered them from their destruction. Matthew 8, 8, remember the servant? He came to Jesus and he said, Speak a word and my servant will be healed. Yeah. Just speak the word. Right. See, this is the beauty of prayer. Though we're, I think it's Colossians 2, though we're absent from them in the natural, in the flesh, the Bible says, we can be present with them in the spirit. That's right. And when you're praying the word of God over them, that word of God is, is creating an atmosphere for them. That's right. New Agers call it energy. It's creating a Holy Ghost energy. Right. Okay? Job twenty two twenty eight says, you'll decree a thing and it will be established. All right, so where do we begin? We're going to ask of the Father in Jesus' name. James 4, 2, I've said it probably a dozen times. We have not because we ask not. John Wesley once said, it seems like God is limited by our prayer life. 
that he could do nothing for humanity unless someone asked him. Why? And this usually surprises people. Because God is not running everything in this world. He's not. He does not have everything under control. Always gets really quiet when I say that. Well, how do you, where do you get that from? The Bible says that Satan, 2 Corinthians 4, 3 and 4, he is the ruler of this present age. He is the God of this world. Do you remember when Jesus was tempted 40 days and 40 nights in the wilderness? Mm -hmm. The very first temptation he said to Jesus is, I own all this. If you just bow down and worship me, I'll give it to you. Right. What does that mean? It means we have to ask. It means that we are God's avenue into the earth. That's right. It means through his earth death, energy. burial, and resurrection, he gives <coughs> us, the church, back the keys of, right. of, of dominion. So when we ask, we're exercising our authority, mm -hmm. right. and now we have control because we're the church. That's right. That's and the greater one, the Holy Ghost, is on the inside of us. Okay? Is that clear enough? I usually take about 20 minutes on that, but we're not going to today. No. Psalms 2.8 says, Ask for the heathen. Bear your inheritance. I know that also says translation, but another, trans another translation says nations. But it also another translation also says, Ask for the heathen. Your children are your inheritance. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Right? right? Yes. Yes. Amen. Matthew 9, 38. Here's a good one to pray for your children. Ask that the Lord of the harvest, therefore, would send out a person, this works, or persons to influence your children yes. in matters of their walk with God. <laughs> Lord, I just ask if your child's not listening to you, Right? Well, just ask that God would send laborers across their path yeah. to influence them with their walk with God. Amen. Someone just like them. Sometimes I pray more specific. Lord, send somebody that's like them. Like that's, you know, likes to wear like the, you know, the certain kind of clothes or, you know, you know, people like to relate. Right. Sure. Send the right laborer whereby my child will open up. Yes. You can pray that God would do this for your children. I'm just going right. to let you think about that for a second. That's right. Mm -hmm. Does it work? Prayer opens up the door for God to work. It does. <clears throat> Amen. Just let you breathe. Amen. Breathe. <laughs> prayer opens up the door. You, Mark, you, you, it sounds like it's magic. <clears throat> your prayer goes beyond magic. Right. Mm -hmm. And hope so, maybe so, que sera, sera. Prayer works. Right. That's why we give so many scriptures. Because exactly. I'll be honest with you, I'm over it. Yeah. I don't have a lot of time. You know, we've got to get this word out into the earth. Yeah. And, and you know, this is not a time for a lot of storytelling and you know, you know, patty cake, patty cake, baker's man, <laughs> bake me a cake as fast as you can. No, 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 no. The generals in this day and in this hour are becoming sharpshooters. This is true. Yeah. That is and so it's time true. for us to really equip the church to do yeah. the work of the ministry and get right. people into position. Right. We don't have a lot of time. As you can see, the devil, he's really speeded things up. Mm -hmm. Everything just happened, happening so quick. Yes. Even like the whole, you know, you look at phones, right? You know, these phones, one thing, it's the iPhone 7, then it's the iPhone 8, yeah. then the 9, then it, it's just, everything's happening so fast. Can I be honest? I don't even know how to work my own TV. Mm. Right. It's, it's, it's you just sit there. Now. Yeah, it's like, what smart happened movie. to pressing a button and getting the TV to go on? Yeah. No, instead you're sitting there for a half an hour, you just want to relax. Right. By the time a half an hour is up, you're so much more frustrated and irritated <laughs> than you could possibly imagine because you can't get the TV to go on. Right. Uh -huh. Am I the only one? No, that's my second no. book. Right. See what I mean? Right. So what are you saying? What I'm saying is things have progressed and are happening so fast. That's why his leaders really need to put the word of God out. Yeah. This patty cake gospel is not going to make it. Right. It's not going to cause the church to make it. Right. Yeah. 
No, you know, I just need to, you know, I just need to know, you know, you're positive, positive this and positive thoughts. No! No. Word of God! Yes. Yes, be truth. positive. We need some truth. Yes, you know, be strong and courageous. Yes, use your I am affirmations. I have them on my phone too. But we need the word of God. Amen. Okay. Amen. Ask that the Lord of the harvest would send somebody out to your child. Here's a good one. Ask for open doors. Mm. <coughs> 2 Corinthians 2.12. Ask for open doors of opportunity for them. Mm. What do you mean? Here's what my friend Susan and I did. We, we prayed. Our assignment was to pray our kids from the time Susan and I met, fourth grade, all the way up till even now we're still praying for our kids. And the kids are 30. So we prayed them through every season of their life. We came into agreement, and we were in agreement. We mixed our faith together, and we prayed for all the different seasons of their lives. And I, when I think of this particular scripture, I think of doors of opportunity. I remember when the kids, you know, were applying for college. And, you know, those of you that have ever done the whole college process know it is a process. <laughs> and the applications are expensive. And the kids fill out 10 <coughs> applications. And they want to go visit 10 or 12 schools. And it's a process. You know, and then, the, then we're told as parents, well, the kid is, your child is going to know if it's a fit or not. How many of you know the whole speech? Yeah. Let yeah. them make the decision, the whole speech. So what did you, what did we do? How did we pray? Susan and I prayed that God, if, the, what, if one of the kids really wanted to get into a certain school, we prayed, Lord, open up this door for them in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Father, we ask that you would surround them with favor like a shield. Yeah. You sit in your word, you know, you're quoting scripture. Right. You sit in your word, you would give them the desires of their hearts. Right. Lord, grant them the desires <laughs> of their heart. We pray for open doors. Yeah. And then they, then they graduated college. So then what? Now they need a job. Yeah. So what do you do? Father, we pray that you would open up doors of opportunity for them to get a job yeah. in where they want to get a job. Remember, the scripture says, I, I wish above all that you what? Prosper, mm -hmm. be in health, yes. even as your soul prospers. Right. It's God's will that your child have the job that they desire that will cause prosperity to come into their lives. Right. But we need to pray for them. Yeah. Prayer opens up the door for God to work. That's right. Okay, we already said it, but I'll say it again. We can pray for favor for them. Yes. Psalms 5, 2, it is you, Lord, who blesses the righteous man with favor like a shield. We can pray that God will quicken in their minds or bring a quickening in their minds. The creative thinking and the ability to remember things, for example, like on a test. Yes. And grandmas, this will be, this is a good one for you. When your grandchildren are studying for a test, pray that, that God would quicken their minds and here's a scripture that's really good. John 14, 26. But the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things, and he'll what? Bring all things to your remembrance. So we would pray, Lord, you know, because <coughs> let me just say this. I've, I've had prayer lines with young people, and I <clears throat> talk to young people. Test taking is very stressful. Mm-hmm. The, the level of competition that's in the schools and in the colleges and the SATs or the ACTs, very stressful. Yeah. But we can support them in prayer. Amen. Father, you said in your word that you would, I don't know where the scripture is, that you would make my child wiser than their peers. Mm. Quicken mm -hmm. their mortal bodies, we pray. And we pray that you would quicken their minds. May everything that they've studied, Father, and put the work in. Father, bring it to their remembrance in Jesus' name. And we just speak peace yes. to our children. May there be just a sense of peace. And we rebuke, in the name of Jesus, the spirit of fear. Yeah. Does that work? Prayer opens up the door for God to work. Amen. You're creating an atmosphere around your child for success. That's right. Never thought it like that or never said that before. That was really good. Yes. Ask the master potter to mold them. Mm -hmm into what he has designed for them according to the destiny that is in their heart from the moment that they were formed in their mother's womb. That's a big one yeah. because that's why we talk about the bend of the child. If Gary Smalley talks about that. Every child has a bend right. or a rhythm or a destiny 
or a call. Mm -hmm. Pray that is what is on the inside of them would rise up, give illumination to their mind, and that they would follow the God course and not the good course. Mm -hmm. That's really good. Yeah, wish I had that on tape and I had it written down. <laughs> it's under here. See? Okay. Because, yes, the Spirit said there's many voices in the world. Yeah. And there's college counselors, mm -hmm. there's teachers, mm -hmm. right. there's all these other people that are influencing them. But Father, we want our children to be influenced not That's by might, spirit. nor by power, right. nor by college, influ you know, college mm -hmm. people trying to coach them right. coach yeah. them we want holy spirit you to coach them yes yes may they hear the voice of the good shepherd yes, and may the Lord. voice of another may they not follow coach them holy ghost nudge them holy ghost yes, have your way holy ghost okay Amen. here's a good one pray that god would give them dreams in the night this actually happened to my children because I was praying and my friends and I, we do prayer calls. We're going to get back on it the first of the year. But we would pray that our children would have dreams in the night. Speak to them, Lord. Speak to them. And, and we, you know, we have a family text. You guys have family texts with you and your kids. So we had a, we had a, a text come down the, the family chat. My son, Jonathan, and, and, and his wife. These kids, let me tell you, these kids are prophetic. That's why they need to be taught what's going on. They both had the same kind of a dream in the same night, their husband and wife. So they send, comes down the family chat about th these dreams. And mommy, what does this dream mean? Now, I'm personally not a dream interpreter, but I do send it off to people that are. And I mean, they're going on and on. I said, wow. I go, we've been praying that you guys would have dreams in the night. They're like, really? So I took a picture of my notes with these scriptures I'm going to read you. They go, wow, it works. I go, yep, it works. Really so here's the scripture. Job 33, 14 says, for God does speak now one way, now another. He does, doesn't he? Yes. Through or though <coughs> no one perceives it in a dream, in a vision of the night. When deep sleep falls on people and they slumber in their beds, yep. he may speak in their ears, and this is good for some kids, and terrify them with warnings <laughs> <laughs> to turn them from wrongdoing yes. and keep them from pride. Yeah. So pray that God gives them dreams in the night. Don't pray your own will. Please That's don't ever right. pray your own will. Right. Pray the word of God, please. Yes. Because when you pray your own will on your child, you're praying in witchcraft it's prayers. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. We think we know what's best for our children, but there's only one who knows best, and that is Jesus. That's right. That's why it's important to pray the word of God. And when we talk next week about praying in the Holy Ghost, you'll see that this is the confidence that you can have in him, that when you pray in tongues, mm -hmm. you're praying according to the perfect That's will of right. God. Exactly. You're not praying your own will. You're not praying what you think your child should do. You're praying <clears throat> the will of God according to the destiny that is right here on the inside of them because right. destiny is already in them. Yeah. It's already in them. So when you're praying into that by the Holy Ghost or speaking the word, it's helping to unwrap what is in them. That's right. Psalm 16, 7, I will praise the Lord who counsels me. Even at night, my heart instructs me. Yeah, I know. I could just see there's somebody I could just see laying in their bed. In the night, they lay down in their bed, and then they're just under such conviction because they can't stop. They, 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 they're, they're under conviction for what they're doing, and when they finally lay down at night, the Holy Ghost just deals with them. Yeah. This is the way. Walk ye in it. Don't go there. I've set before you life and death, right. blessing and cursing. You choose this way. Choose life. And they're laying in their bed, and the Holy Ghost is dealing with them. Yeah. Don't think for one second that the Holy Ghost is not dealing with them. Okay. We're almost done. Pray the greatest revelation of all. The revelation of the love of God that was manifested at the cross. Yeah. Ephesians 3, 14 through 19. You could literally put their name in this scripture. Do you want me to read it? Yeah. You'd be surprised how many people don't know this. We know it. We've heard it. 
But you know how many people all around the world don't know how to pray <coughs> and don't know the Bible? We think because we know it, everybody knows it, but the generations coming up, they don't know this. You can pray this Ephesians 3 prayer. It's Ephesians 3, I put their name in it, 14. Ephesians 3, 14. For this cause I bow my knees. These are Holy Spirit inspired prayers. To the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, from whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he would grant Jonathan, Stephanie, Jacqueline, Calvin, Danielle, and Jamie, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might through his spirit in the inner man. You're praying that they be strengthened. That Christ may dwell in their hearts through faith, that they being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the width and length and depth and height, that they would know the love of Christ, which passes knowledge, that they would be filled with all the fullness of God. Oh, I'm going to go ahead and throw this one in. Now to him who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all, we ask, hope, dream, or desire according to the power that works in us. Amen. The greatest revelation our young people or this generation can have is the revelation of the love of God. Amen. Because 1 John 4, 18 says, perfect love drives out fear. And I'm going to tell you straight up, because I talk to these young people, there's never been so much anxiety and fear and stress. There is so much fear, anxiety, and stress on these rising generations like no other generation ever. But when they get a revelation of the love of God, and they find out who they are in Christ, and they find out that God loves me, and what the cross was all about, the greatest demonstration of love, it'll really change them. How many of you know that to be true for yourself? Right? Okay. Then pray for spiritual enlightenment. I'm going to go ahead and read this one too. I'm almost done. Pray for spiritual enlightenment. Now you can pray these prayers over and over and over and over and over. Every day, every day, every day. Just remind God of his word. Pray this over them. Pray for spiritual enlightenment. Ephesians 1, 17. And you can pray this for yourself. Yeah. Absolutely. I pray... Verse 17, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give Jonathan, Stephanie, Jacqueline, Calvin, Jamie, and Danielle, put their name in there, the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. Yes. Yeah. What is revelation? Revelation is where it goes past your head, it goes into your heart, and you see with the eyes of your spirit things that you normally wouldn't see with your head. Yeah. It goes out of human reasoning, and it's revelation. Revelation is where is when a person is able to walk in the knowledge that they've received. They understand it in their hearts by revelation. Yeah. So pray that they would have a spirit <coughs> of wisdom and revelation. And verse 18... And that the eyes of their understanding would be enlightened. They're, they're, you are a spirit. You have a soul and you live in a body. Mm -hmm. When you pray this prayer for, the, for your children, your, your spirit has eyes. Your eyes are being opened and enlightened. It's like you wake up. How do you remember when you got saved? Yeah. Here's a perfect example, right? One day you went, what? I see Jesus. I get it. And it was just like it hit you. Whereas before you'd heard the gospel over and over and over and over and it didn't penetrate. Right. And all of a sudden one day it just hit you. I get it. Well, this is the eyes of their understanding being enlightened. They'll get it. Just keep praying. Amen. Amen. That they would know what is the hope of his calling and what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints and what is the exceeding greatness of his power toward them who believe according to the working of his mighty power. Okay? Thank you, Jesus. We worship you. Mm -hmm. Lastly, we're just going to highlight this, because it's stating the obvious, but not to all. Use your authority on their behalf. Mm -hmm. 
demand that the devil takes his hands off of them and ceases his influence over their lives. Jesus said, in my name, you'll cast out devils. In my name, I've given you authority and power. Now go in my name. Right. Use your authority over their, on their behalf. Say in the name of Jesus, take your hands off of my child. Yeah. Take your hands. See, we have everything. We have all the tools. We have the word of God, we have the name of Jesus, and we have tongues. That's right. We said it, Satan is the God of this world. And remember, sometimes the devil will manifest through them, right? Matthew 28, 18 through 20, I said it. The authority is given to the church in the name of Jesus. Mark 16, in my name. You can quench the fiery darts that bring oppression, depression, Suicide thoughts. Yes. Hallelujah. Thank you. Use the name of Jesus. And I don't really know. Maybe somebody who's listening knows. And I think there's power in the blood of Jesus. Yes. yes. I don't know why or what, because I have never really studied it out. And I didn't really haven't really heard a lot of teaching on it. But I'm going to give you an example. We're going to close with this. Teresa and I, who's, who, who's here with me today, her and her husband, we, we went into a prison in Ocala, Florida. Powerful time of ministry in the Word. You can't even imagine. You know, you talk about turning into another person. Wow. I, pr I was so tired one day. So tired. And I had to speak to how many women were in there? 250. About 200 something women. And wow. we're in a correctional facility. I can remember putting my head back on the back of the, of the wall. Go, how am I going to minister to these women? I'm, I'm literally exhausted. Like, I'm talking exhausted, sleepy exhausted. Mm. I got up to speak, and I preached like a house on fire, fire with revelations awesome. and things you never thought of. It was Praise coming out of my mouth for two and a half hours. Thank you, Jesus. You can't do that except yeah. by the Holy Ghost. Yeah. See, yeah. this is that's why this whole ministry thing and what we do... This is not about us. No, it's not. You know, we're just vessels that are channels for yes. the Holy Spirit to flow through and operate through so he could get his work done in the earth. He said, I'm going to build my kingdom. That's right. As a matter of fact, the Lord said, I'm going to build this prayer movement. Yeah. And the gates of hell will not prevail or abort it. I'm Amen. doing it. Yes. So anyway, they had a time whereby they wanted us to pray for the prisoners if they needed prayer. We weren't allowed to touch them. They weren't allowed to tell us. There were rules. They weren't allowed to tell us why they were in prison. Um, there were just these rules. And then we went behind, uh, we went into a room, like with a, 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 a window, so you could see what was going on. So everything was open. So I, 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 I sat in my chair. Teresa sat in her chair. We were about this far apart. And she got her, her, her girl, her purse, and I got my purse. And, and, you know, people would come and go, come and go. And and Teresa got a new person, and I've got this person. And then, you know, I, I'm talking to the girl, woman, asking, what do you need prayer for? And um, she's talking to me. And Teresa's, you know, sweet Teresa. She's talking to her, your prisoner. She's sweet Teresa, okay? Who's kind of new at all this, okay? Teresa's sitting there talking to the prisoner lady. And all of a sudden, the, pr the, the woman goes, Oh, <laughs> I, I could read Teresa's mind. It was a discerning of spirits in operation. I don't know what it was, or maybe just being a friend and you just knew know the person. I hear the growl and I look over at Teresa. She looks at me and she goes, Teresa goes to look at me so as to say, help me. <laughs> And so I said, you know what? This, this is this. You know how your mind, you got a million things yeah. all at once thinking. I said, we cannot have a manifestation in this room. Mm -hmm. It'll be bad for the prisoners. It'll be bad for us. We can't have demons throwing tables. That's we right. can't have a fit. The guards will come in. I mean, this is prison. Yeah. Yeah. Like, legit. Yeah. So I was just, in my spirit, I, I released faith and patience which are the power twins, and I released into the atmosphere, you are not going to manifest here. That's right. I didn't even have to open my mouth. I just said, you are not manifesting here. 
And so I finished with my person I was praying with and, and um, I got up, went over to the woman behind her, uh, next to her actually, and I said, well, we're going to pray. I don't forget exactly what we prayed, mm -hmm. but we had her confess something and then the, the enemy wasn't leaving. And, and something on me, someone, him, Holy Spirit said, use the blood of Jesus. Mm -hmm. I said, I just command, I just cover her with the blood of Jesus. Mm -hmm. And when I said that, that thing whoosh, left her immediately. Wow. So I don't know what it is about the blood of Jesus. I think there's something to it. I saw it actually happen with this woman. So anybody like to send me any teachings on the blood of Jesus, that'd be great. Mm -hmm. But we need to pray for our ch children. Prayer opens up the door for God to work. We're going to close by praying, actually. Now, I have a prayer, and I'm going to ask Stephen if you could pass it out. <clears throat> and then you guys can keep it. This is a, All these are in my, my book. I have a lot of prayers in the book. Now, this is a Holy Spirit. Oh, can I have one? This is a Holy Spirit-inspired prayer. I sat in my office one day, and the Holy Spirit downloaded this two-and-a-half-page prayer. I personally am a long-winded prayer. I pray long. And this actually came to me like you would get, what, you, any of you that are writers, you write books, it came to me like that. It just came into me. And so what, I said all that to say, this is a Holy Spirit-inspired prayer. And what I want us to do is I want us to read it together. But I don't want you just to read it. <clears throat> I want you to really, like, mix your faith with it. And make it a prayer. Yeah. Amen. Not just, oh, I'm reading something. Right. Okay. And this is how we're going to close the service today. Okay. Does everyone have a copy? Yes. Because this is a prayer for the rising generations. All right. Ready? Yeah. So before we pray, we're, it says your I see an army of young men and women rising in this hour. In order to have, in order to be successful in intercession, you do need vision. You with me? Yeah. Okay. You need vision. You need a vision for your family. You need a vision for your children. You, you just have to imagine them serving God and in church. Okay? All right. So let's, let's begin. Father, I see an army of young men and women rising in this hour. Soldiers, men and women who are armed and dangerous to the kingdom of darkness. May you anoint them with fresh oil more than any other generation. You said in your word that where sin abounds, your grace would so much more abound. So I ask for an abundance of grace, abundance of signs and wonders and miracles to be made manifest to this generation. As a natural spiritual parent, I agree with your word that not one of them will be lost but all of them will be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. I release my faith, Father, and I refuse to be moved by temporal circumstances. I release my faith now into the atmosphere, and I call every lost and prodigal son and daughter home in Jesus' name. For those who walk with you and have clean hands and pure hearts, I ask that you would bless them with wisdom and spiritual understanding. May they see and hear with revelation from the Holy Spirit. May the eyes of their understanding be enlightened so that they may know what you have called them to do and be as they live temporarily on this earth. I pray that this generation of young people would become a body fully filled with flooded with you. I pray that this generation would rise up and call their parents blessed for training them in the ways that they should go. I pray that our children and youth would be a generation who, like the first century believers, turn the world upside down with the gospel. May our children turn the world upside down with the flames of a revival spirit. May the river of God rise up within them like an artesian well, so much that they won't be able to contain the river arising in their hearts. I pray that from this river would come a greater measure of boldness, 
that they would open up their mouths boldly and make known the mystery of the gospel to their generation. I break the spirit of fear and intimidation that would keep them from announcing their faith to their peers in Jesus' name. May the light of the glory of God rise within the youth of this nation. May they be radiant and give you glory. May they shine as lights in the darkness. May their light shine so brightly that their unbelieving peers will be drawn to you. May their light shine so brightly that their peers will see Jesus and come to the knowledge of the truth. I bind every work of darkness that would put a stronghold on this generation of believers and the young budding leaders. No weapon formed against our youth will prosper in the name of Jesus. I declare that our youth have strength for all things in Christ who empowers them. They are ready for anything and equal to any task because Christ infuses them with his strength on the inside. They are self-sufficient in Christ's sufficiency. They will do above and beyond all we could ask or imagine performing greater works than Jesus did for the glory of God. Amen.